practice today for this VCA and I feel quite discouraged by the deep I investing a lot of money to try and get to service just like that started. Science editor Steve Newman reports on one person already using the brand new system. So this was the quad that I was given to practice with. Um, on the actual CDCA barrier portion, the amount of like calculus is not this much. It's definitely more subgingible and you definitely have to use like an explorer to retract the, the gun a little bit and then you'll be able to see like how deep and like how far the calculus is painted on the tube. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. For those who don't know me, my name is Gloria. I'm a fourth year dental student at Tufts. Um, today I will be sharing my CDC operative and perio mannequin portion of the exam and how my experience went. Uh, I filmed this yesterday, but the sun was setting, so each shot <laughs> my film was getting like darker and darker. So I'm re-filming everything, which kind of like bumps me out because it's 8 a.m. and I'm a makeup on. <laughs> Anyways, without further ado, let me explain to you how the exam works. So I actually think it's awesome that the ADX um, is doing the mannequin portion now because I think it's actually more ethical than the you know live patient portion because a lot of the lesions don't need to be treated and I think just having the live patient go through the whole process for so long is uh, you know it's difficult for everyone. Difficult for the students, difficult for the patients. So mannequin is awesome. The only downside for this year is that this is the first time that we were doing the mannequin operative and perio so there was just a lot of uncertainty of like how the exam is gonna go like certain instructions that i just never received and i think all just all in all it was hectic um, but i got through it i passed so here are my tips for operative portion you are supposed to do one class two restoration and one class three um, for class two it's almost always going to be tooth number 30 mo but for class 3, it's going to be either tooth number 8 or 9. It's going to be ML or DL. So when you're practicing, you can really try all four different spots because you can get any of them. For me, on the day of the exam, I got number 30 ML for class 2 and tooth number 8 DL for the class 3. And the exam starts at 8 a.m. and typically you are done with the operative portion by 3 p.m. and you can start your perio. But if you're done earlier than that, you can start perio right away. So I've seen people leave like even before 2 p.m. Even for me, I was like, well, like 8 to 3 p.m. means like 7 hours to 2 operative. Like I totally got this. No, 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 no. When you send in your final prep check, final restoration check, even like mob requests, that all takes 30 to 45 minutes each. So it's not really that you're working for seven whole hours, but you're really like anxiously waiting for that to come back so you can move on to the next step. Um, I actually was the probably the last one <laughs> to start the perio at 4.15. The latest you can start perio is 4.15. Don't be like me and spend too much on one tooth that you're like backlogged and I literally turned in my final restoration check at 3.55 p.m. and it came back, thank goodness, a little shorter but by 4.15 so I can start my perio because otherwise, I would have failed both my second restoration and the perio portion. So, oh, praise the Lord, I don't know how it all worked out. Well, hey, it all worked out. I just heard a crack, wow. Anyways, so what did I bring? I brought just my own rubber shroud, you know, the rubbery face because I just don't know how stiff the, the one that the school has for me. So I just brought mine because it's a little stretched out from four years of use. Um, I printed the manual, um, I think. You don't have to print out the whole manual, but I definitely recommend reading it at least a week before. Don't be like me and read all 90 pages on the morning of. <laughs> the page that you really have to print out is page 34. 
um, it's basically talking about how to request like modifications and like how to go about like internet pull cap and all that stuff like 34 or 35 definitely print those out it is going to save you <laughs> and i took a picture of my three digit number on the um, ctca webpage on the profile section and i also brought a pen a pen is a must and you're supposed to bring two forms of id so here are my general tips for passing the operative mannequin portion of the ctca so number one expect to send in a mod request at least on one of the two teeth um, i think i've heard of people doing mod requests on both teeth just one tooth for me i sent in two mod requests on the first one which was class two and i didn't do any mod request for class three that was because i was like short on time so i just gambled i was like i'm just gonna remove the decay and like send it in because i don't have time i only did two more requests but i know a lot of people did like five to six i think it's just better to play safe so the rule of thumb is that you do the ideal preps first don't even look at the decay don't look at anything just do your ideal class two by the time you send it out though you need to have a gingival clearance like you know the open contact whatever you need to have all that ready i would say stop at when the popal depth is about like 1.5 and then the box depth is about 2.5 to 3 millimeters if it's getting close to three millimeters you should stop and just put in like a mod request number two is that i would check the dimensions on the rubric Contrary to the pros portions where they really specify wall by wall how to reduce your teeth um, For the operative portion is actually not as straightforward And I think that works in our favor in that like there is no like like absolute depth that you need to do it It's actually easier to follow those instructions than like this big 1.5 millimeters from the DEJ Like what? <laughs> so yeah um, I would definitely double check, especially if you're planning on doing amalgam over composite. The dimensions are a little probably different, so I would read up on those. Tip number three, I would go over tactile feel over discoloration slash stain because Explorer is your, going to be your best friend and it's all about like feeling that it doesn't stick more than chasing like one spot of discoloration that just doesn't go away. If, like the number one reason to fail the exam is if the decay is not all removed. So really check everywhere at every angle, make sure that nothing is sticking. You can really compare that with the pulpal floor and how hard it feels versus on the proximal box floor, the gingival floor. Feel is everything. I actually let go of a discoloration on my gingival floor because it just wasn't going away. <laughs> and I was like, you know what, I don't have time. I actually sent in a request to deepen the box, but they denied it. So I took it as a sign that, well, if you don't think I need to deepen it, I'm just going to leave it. And I was approved to proceed to final restoration. So definitely don't chase after that one little speck that you see that's not going away. It's all about feel. Number four, it's normal to see some pink. So the reason that I took forever on my class two was because I started seeing pink and I froze and I'm like, do I need to do an internet pull cap? Like, am I the only one seeing this pink? Well, lo and behold, a lot of people actually did see the pink, but it wasn't soft. I actually even saw pink on the closel and I'm like, why is that there? <laughs> so inside the box, towards the buckle, I started seeing some pink um, because I think my box was like widened to, I think like three millimeters and it was just getting wide, but like you have to remove all the decay. So when you see some pink, don't panic, go with the Explorer to feel it, and if it feels hard, it's fine, you're in the pull. The only time that you would do in the pull cap is you've done like two to three mod requests already, you're pretty deep, and there's still 0.5 millimeters of carries left. That's when you request an in the pull cap. Um, so if, you, if it feels hard and it's pink, it's fine, so leave it. I really feel that this exam tests your ability to follow the rules correctly than like your ability to actually take out the decay, because there are just so many rules, and that's why it takes so long. The number one thing that I think everyone should review is how to write the mod requests. And I freaked out because I kind of was not following the page instruction. <laughs> for those like me, let me like, just like spill it out for you, okay? So I have like my notes down here in case you haven't noticed. Okay, so every time you send a mod request, there's gonna be a sheet of paper. And you send in, you take out the pink part of the typodont, put it in a box along with the mod request sheet. On that sheet, there's up to four requests you can do, and you have to send the request wall by wall. So for example, um, the first modification request I did, I requested two walls. So it goes like, what? Extend the proximal box. I want to go deeper. Where? Gingerly. How much? 0.5 millimeters. And why? Carries. I've heard that people got rejected for 0.5 to 1 millimeters. You can write a range, but I played it safe, so I put in 0.5 millimeters. And for widening the box, because I needed to go a little more, um, I said 
what? Extend the axial wall, where distally, so I can widen mesiodistally, how much 0.5 to 1 millimeters Y carries. So you have to really like write it like that and that's how you get approved. That's how you write your modification requests. So basically, those are the two things I wrote to deepen and widen the proximal box. Tip number six is that there is a point deduction for every mod request denied. Tirori! <laughs> so I was more stressed that it got denied and I had another point deduction or something. I was like, I gotta fail. But it's fine because this is pass fail exam and uh, they were pretty generous, I think, with in terms of grading because your preps after the ideal preps is never gonna look pretty like everyone's is just like what is this so like it's fine so there are two reasons as to why the mod request gets denied i think so number one is you you either ask for too much when you're describing how much so 0.5 to 1 millimeters is a norm sometimes even giving that range gets did like rejected so you have to specify 0.5 millimeters and play safe and just send more mod requests at increments but that means you're also losing like 30 minutes to 45 minutes so you know, it really depends on your luck, like I said. Um, and also, like, sometimes I think that one millimeter is too much. So when you're requesting like one number instead of a range, I wouldn't really say one millimeters. I would say either 0.5 millimeters or say 0.5 to one millimeters, like give a range. And I think those two options are the safest. A lot of people got denied for, I think, one millimeter like requests. Two, um, the reason that the mod request gets denied is because um, the prep already is good for the fill. I think that's one way to check if you're okay to proceed. So I saw this little tiny speck on the gingival floor of my box and I was trying to get rid of it and to go deeper, but they denied it. So for me, I'm like, well, if you think that I'll need to go deeper, then I'm just gonna leave it and they approve my final prep check. For operative, you need to have the rubber dam on for the prep check and the mod requests. Um, but for the final restoration check, you need to have the rubber dam removed because you're taking the occlusion or at least you appear to have checked your occlusion if you're running out of time but you need to have that thing off so to briefly go over what happened on the day of my exam I started with the class 2 to allow for time to ask for mod requests and stuff because more often than not a lot of us actually requested mod requests for class 2 and class 3 and lo and behold my tooth was weird I saw a, this tiny little dimple on the gingival floor of my box that just wasn't going away after the more I drilled and there was also just like buckle of the proximal box like decay the typical one that you see with the round bar they remove and then the spoon excavator I expected the carries to be in like one localized area but it was like two separate areas like one on the floor one on the buckle so I was like what is this and then I started seeing pink so I'm like what is this so now I know don't be afraid of pink don't chase after the stain I know it catches on the explorer but like you can let it go and for class 3, I actually didn't have a lot of time left because I spent too long on the first class 2 that I barely had time for class 3. I think I was allowed to start working on my class 3 at 2.30 and I had to get everything done by 4.15 including the final prep check and the final restoration check. Despite my advice of doing the ideal press first and then ask for mods, I just did the best I could and you know according to the rubric, there wasn't any like hard like dimensions that's like a big no-no or at least that's what I think. So I did my two by three. Um, it was less than three millimeters though. Like axial wall depth was around like three millimeters, but I got rid of all the decay. Um, I was really, really, really gentle with not nicking the adjacent tooth. I think for both class two and class three, I used um, the bender wedge to protect the adjacent tooth from like being nicked. When it came to like filling, uh, you can't really stick an instrument and like wedge between because for class three, you don't break the incisal contact, you only break the gingival contact. So it's actually hard to put the mylar strip in. So I try to, I, I don't know, I just blanked out and I just couldn't get the strip in. You use an instrument to like prop it open and then put the strip in. And you can use a blade, um, whether that's like number 12 or 15, I forget which blade. You can use the composite finishing strips. Um, I actually use a fender wedge. I was like, and the most important thing is to get the floss in and snaps out without breaking or getting all like hairy and fuzzy, right? It was just a day of pure panic. I was surprised that they kept telling me to keep going. I was like, you want me to keep going? <laughs> I turned in my class three restoration at 3.55. I got it back right before 4.15 and then I started doing the perio portion. So my only tip for perio is just like, you don't need to overdo it because if you overdo it and you gouge your teeth, that's also negative points for you. They just give you like a quad, like 
I think I had lower left quadrant and they just say like oh like 18 MD like 19 MD like 20 M like only scale the areas that you're supposed to scale out you can demonstrate that those are the areas that you were given and told to scale so just do those I only use the curettes so I use like the 1 slash 2, 11 slash 12, 13 slash 14 and I didn't really use like the other scalers because they're very sharp and you can actually gouge out the two. And you can stick an instrument there to kind of like retract the gun and you can actually visualize on the mesium distal which ones like are remaining. And it kind of like this is pretty much like what it will look like and they kind of feel like pencil shavings, like um, kind of like black truffle mushroom, you know they have like a very thin little shavings, that's what it feels like. And it's actually not that bulky like a whiteout to where you can feel it. So you really have to like retract the gum and like visually see like if you remove all the calculus. Um, but period didn't take that long. I actually finished in I think 15 to 20 minutes. So my other tips um, to close off would be I would definitely review in that pull cap. Um, you don't write, I think, dical, you say calcium hydroxide um, and don't leave any unsupported enamel. I think that's a given. And then use the hatchet gently, it can break the tooth. And for perio, you don't need to use a cabotron. You can use the curettes and you can be done in like 15 to 20 minutes. You can sharpen, but there's no need to like over sharpen the instruments either. They come off pretty easily. I hope that my tips have helped. And if you'd like to follow more along my residency journey and finishing up my last few months of dental school, please subscribe to this channel, uh, like this video, and keep watching. Okay, until next time. <laughs> Bye.